call the temporary roll for this meeting. Secretary. I'm right here. Have an opportunity to do that. Ready? Randy. Here. Steve. You don't get here. Ralph Stevens. Here. Debbie. Can we get the last name, please? Certainly. Uh, excuse me if I ask for them. Yeah, I'm going to wait for a second. Right here. Christine Hill, that's me. I'm here. Steve Perry. Here. Frank Curry. Here. Tom McKay. Friday. Here. Uh, do we what here what here here okay great uh, uh Becca Zerbit here Barbara Hanny here Matt Raymond uh, Lance Roberts here. Richard Cooley here. Jim Norcott Cross here. Ed Brian here. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, Chris Mathis McCullough here. Yeah. Brandon Wall here. Uh, Elise Santeri. Here. I'm sorry, forgive me, thank you for your patience. Kevin Castor. Here. Kyle Easterly. Here. Mike Paulson. Here. Dave Morgan. Present. Smarty. Kurt Wickersham. Here. Good for you. Randy Stevens. Yep. Gloria Schreiber. Here. Steve Stray. Here. Good, good. William Spearman. Here. Bruce Schulbe. Bruce. I saw him one time. No, Bruce, yeah, yeah. Joe uh, Riggs. Here. Oh. Andy Clary. Proxy Rick, put back here. Rick Dewey. Put back so everybody can see you. Thank you. And then we have uh, Jeremiah Stevens. Here. Peter Goldberg. Here. Richard Eagle. Here. Mike. Here. Thank you. Uh, Neil uh, Don Angerman here. Brent Cole. Fred 
Jordan. Your driver's license. Jordan. Right. Then you're Thank you, Jordan. Uh, Steve Mininarum. Thank you, Steve. 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 Thank
I suppose I'm just a little confused about how the reorganization of the districts actually is going to go into play with the bonus well, votes. The, the bonus votes, as far as I can see, and we'll talk about this later, let's get further conversation until we get around to actually seeing the members. This okay. is a temporary role. Sure. Yeah. There's a Republican seat. It's held by a Republican. Currently not living. But you're good. What? As soon as the governor gets around to having one. Yeah. Yeah. You need a vacancy before you can sell it, right? To see, we call the roll. We obviously have a quorum. And I'd like to ask Glenn Perry to come up and talk to the And then Bill Sperry. Look at some flesh. I know. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this opportunity to join together and unite for the good of our state and our country. And we pray, Lord, that uh, you would give us wisdom in the decisions that we make and that, Lord, we would uh, take care of this state as you would have us to do so. We thank you for what you've provided for us. I pray for the families that are represented here. As families are away from one another, we pray for the protection of the children. And I pray, Lord, that uh, the delegates and the alternates that are here, that you would give us a great time this weekend together as Republicans. For it's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Okay, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman, point of order. I received an email earlier today, and there may be some people from that district that may, may know more than I do, but I, we received an email this morning that the, uh, we received an email this morning in our office that, um, that the recent um, uh, uh, National Committee woman, um, uh, Ms. Burkhardt, has passed away this morning, and, and, and that's the email we received, and I don't know if people from that district can do um, it. It might be appropriate if you find it so that as Rex noted, and several people have mentioned this, and I mentioned it upstairs, we lost this morning our former National Committee woman, Sue Burkhardt, who served from 2004 to 08, and in 2000 organized our convention in Tulsa. I would like to at this time take a moment of silence on behalf of uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. For uh, This is Tim Worthen, bonus of 20. I was listening to the call of the attendants, but I called him in the middle of it. I don't know if there's anything else on the uh, speaker phone that needs to check in. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tim, who else is on the phone besides uh, Tom Wright from Juno and uh, Mr. Huggins? Robert Donald, District 34. Thank you. Anyone else besides those four? <coughs> Sorry? Yes, sir. Bye. <laughs> did, did Robert Benbull's uh, be on the line there? Yes. Okay. Your district chair has been yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, also, uh, the hearing uh, you know, or the representatives and all. Welcome, uh, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Anybody who's not been called and believes they're a member of this <coughs> party. Uh, at this time, I would like to certify the election of the district chairman. I believe, from my understanding of the temporary role we just, we have at least 38 of those 
40 people here. I want to commend all of you for taking this. All of the chefs are running for district chair and serving as a district chair. I think that it's a wonderful endeavor. We look forward to your involvement in electing Republicans at all levels. Whether it's the local level, the borough level, the state level, or the city level. And uh, I would like to give a hand to all of the chairs who are here. Enjoy. District 5, Lance Roberts. District 6. District 6, Rick Stilley. From Delta. Delta Junction. District 7. We have not crossed this camp. We don't have District 8. Edna DeGrees from District 8, Palmer. District 9. Jeff Hall from District 8, Palmer. Owen 9, Brandon Wall, Wasilla. District 10. District 10, Chris McMullins, Metal Lakes. District 11. This is Sontara, District 11, District 13. Kyle, you should be District 13, North Anchorage. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, Kevin! That's why he didn't respond very well. Yeah, District 12, Kevin Kastner, uh, North Eagle River to uh, Peter's Creek. <laughs> District 14. Mike Walston, East Anchorage. District 15. State Court, former chair of District 20. For um, UMED District 16. Kurt Baker, Sham District 16, which is uh, Chester Creek. 17. Brandy Stevens, District 17, Mountain View. 18. Gloria <coughs> Schreiber, downtown Anchorage. 19. Steve Strait, West Anchorage. 20. Bill Spearman, District 20, uh, Sand Lake and Anchorage. 21. Bruce Schulte, South Anchorage, 21. Sorry. 22. Jason Fressel, Midtown, Anchorage. 23. Joe Riggs, Hillside, District 23. 24. On behalf of Annie Clary, Rick Quebec, uh, Lower Hillside District. 25. Your Martin, you're Martin, you're Martin, you're Martin. 26. Peter Goldberg from the very Republican District 26 of Eagle River. <laughs> 27. Rich Diesel, South Anchorage. District 27. 28, North Kena. Mike Darian, District 28, Sterling, and North Kena. 29. District 29, Neil Lepern, uh, Seattle Buckets. 30. Dick Hawkins, uh, Funny River Road, South, uh, Elmer, and uh, North Kena, and the Fishing Village of the Milkshake. 31. Connie McKenzie with District 31 in the Valley in Juneau. 32. Kathy Hosker, Skagway, Downtown Juneau, Douglas, Cooperknoff, Petersburg. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm off. There's a few more, but this way. <laughs> right. <laughs> 33, Bill Privet, First City of Alaska, Ketchikan, Eastern Prince of Wales, and Wrangell, Alaska. 34. 
Um, so I guess a point of information, I didn't catch every name that was called. Are the regional fi finance chairmen who were appointed based on old districts, um, have we voted on whether they carry them over or ones or whether we're not going to have them for this SEC meeting? How are we handling that? My view is that we will be appointing their replacements at the meeting after this session, after the convention. They have continued to provide services to the party in their role and there's no real provision to change them out and I have asked them all to continue at this time and we'll make a decision on their continuous into the next term on Friday after we on Saturday when we adjourn the meeting and have the post convention session. <laughs> Unless someone contests the election of any of these particular chairs, they are seating as automatic. I would now like to proceed to the seating of the bonus votes and have a review of the minutes that we have done in the office. We find that we have 23 properly elected votes. I'll ask Mr. Culligan to speak to 24. Um, I'm not sure if Mr. Michael Fierley from Wasilla <coughs> Yeah, right. Um, I have a copy of your March 6th voter registration mm -hmm. where you've checked every box except for Green Party and Democratic Party. And as of March 21st, the Division of Elections under the state laws has declared you still undeclared and you are not a registered Republican. I'd like to see that. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> what was that name, please? Mike Parker. Mm -hmm. Just well, I believe in the Constitution. I'm a veteran. I'm a Republican who voted so every time you guys. But as per the state code, there's one box for whatever party you're going to join. I actually am a registered Republican. And I've done this twice, and somehow the party managed to lose it twice. Um, as of March 21st, as of March 21st, you are undeclared according to the state division of elections. That's, that's so where's, where's the Alaska Republican Party in this that I've been involved if with? If you would have checked the Alaska Republican, Republican Party, uh -huh. a single box, uh -huh. you would be a true registered Republican. There wouldn't be any question. Checking every other box, except for Green Party and Democratic Party, which I'm quite proud of you for missing those, <laughs> um, is, is an issue. So are you, this is your signature and this is your registration, I take it? Yeah. Okay. It is. is there any reason that you checked every other box? Because I absolutely uh, believe in those. Okay, but that's not what this form's about. This form is choosing to be a registered Republican. Um, yes, sir. I don't know if we're going to allow questions or okay. any sort of interrogation. Or yeah. At, at this point, um, I think the. So are you saying I'm not actually Republican? You're saying the state says that I'm not a registered Republican. That is the correct process for being a registered Republican, being part of this party, huh. is having a current registration card. Can we rectify the situation by having him fill out another voter registration card? As of his convention, and as of today, and as of certification, I'll leave it up to the body, but the document clearly says he's not a registered Republican at this time nor was he during registration. Let me, let me deal with it in the following context. I will rule that 
based on registration. He is not a registered Republican, and you can appeal this to the Credentials Committee for their decisions as to whether we want to pursue him being seated for the convention, because he is a alternate for the convention. What is your name? Uh, District 7 bonus vote, my hero. Um, they have the website which they made private, unfortunately, but we could bring that up. He could type in the information and we could see what his current registration is as of this moment. This is the document. Okay, let me explain what we did. We, we purchased a voter registration file last week to make sure everybody's processed paper because there were over 4,000 pieces of paper generated by the district. Uh, process. But he said March 21st. Yes, and there's been nothing else filed since then. This is the most recent item in the file. No, you said last week, but he was saying March 21st. No, this, this document came certified from Region 2, uh, stamped from the original election. That's on March 21st is when they certified and ruled on this. We can check so many boxes that they actually registered and checked them in as undeclared because of. Okay. At this time, I would like to give all of you your freedom to appeal to the to the committee. Well, I'd like to object to the ruling that there. Okay. And my objection is that no one's asked him whether he's willing to register Make a motion Republican. Make check on the voter objection is based upon. So I don't know. I'm, I, I also voted in the Republican uh, PPP. You have to be well. to be on the committee. You have to be a registered so, Republican. Is there a second to the appeal? Uh, yes, I second. The signal of the chair is, is appealed from Mr. Brandon Wall, nine. Mr. Wall. This issue is a simple matter. Is this individual a properly registered Republican? The question is shall the decision of the chair be sustained? All in favor and keep us saying aye. 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 All opposed? Thanks, I'm sorry, I didn't know any better. I apologize. How did you get a district convention? They let you vote at the PPP, so. I call on the National Committee for the Sector 23 properly elected members of the Central Committee who are voting. Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion that we seek to remain. Uh, nominated members or elected members of the for the bonus vote. Second, Bill Brevin, District 33. I would object to that. All in favor, please give us a second. Aye. All opposed? So they can come in. So if they can come in, how can we put these guys? I do not have a thing out. There's a whole argument. Didn't I just get in? This action establishes the final role. No, that was the bonus vote members who said it. That's the whole thing. Quiet, please. Thank you. 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 Consider our motion or amendment. Um, this is Mr. Chairman, point of privilege. I, I feel that we need to discuss the problem uh, this problem we have because these are the, the index of problems that we have. We just got the past two days. Unfortunately, the delegates and alternate list weren't made available to us until after the rule set, which is Friday, and there was no way to deal with all the complaints from the email at this point at the beginning of the convention. The funding is going to be done on the website. Anybody can see. Make a motion. Not to matter to 
dealt with this I, I, I move that this be on the agenda to be discussed either this directly related to the agenda of the convention and we need to see this because what we have complaints of and they're in writing where, where are those people being added to delegate and you can give me the second copy of it I second the motion. I second the motion to add to the agenda item, not not to discuss it now. Discussion of ten percent direction rate on the of the delegate multiple lists. Louder! Discussion of alterations to the delegate alternate list uh, that were being submitted from their districts and addition of. Um, delegates that were not present at their district conventions to the list, thereby displacing delegates that were at their conventions further down their list, making <coughs> delegates turning them to the alternate. Um, there's just too many complaints here, so I think we need to have a scenario and let's discuss it. So, your motion for regularities? Sorry, I'm not so good at the motion, but the regularity is the delegate list and the delegate list. Well, my, my issue is that I don't think that we're going to be able to stop credentials in time because, um, first of all, we're supposed to do credential challenges. I call the question. <laughs> no, I already seconded it. Maybe we don't have to discuss it. Just bring it on the agenda. Just to put it on the agenda. That's the question. Does the body wish to add this item, which is in the second, to the agenda? I yes. Affirmative by saying yes. Did you call the question? Yes, he did. So how can he Right, McClary, assistant treasurer. I appreciate Ellen's frustration. However, he's asking us to apparently spend a lot of time in this meeting doing work that the committee is supposed to do. We don't have access to the documentation, we don't have access to copies, and we will spend all night here doing work that we have a committee set up to do. They are prepared to go through all of these allegations and determine whether they're correct or not, and they were important to the, to the, to the convention tomorrow. And I think it's a, a, a what are you talking about? Yeah. total waste of time, and the fact is, without all of the proper documentation, we can do a lousy job of it. So let the people who are appointed to do, it, do their jobs. Um, <clears throat> just a, a point of discussion, I guess. Uh, if we are appointing committees based off of who made it on uh, to the delegate list, and those, those names are going to be chosen to form the, the committees, then aren't we potentially using folks who aren't valid delegates to decide whether or not they get to stay delegates to the convention? Yes. If we, if we defer this to the credentials committee? Um, I think this is a, a situation that we need to settle before we actually uh, appoint our committee. That's my feelings on that. This is something that Credentials has always handled. All of the um, complaints will go to the Credentials Committee. The Credentials will hear them, vote on them, and report to the main body. The people will all go ahead and go on to their committees if we find that they should not be an alternate or a delegate. Their badges will be pulled. and adjustments will be made but we cannot do that now like Frank said we do not have all of the paperwork with us it's secured and it has to be handled by credentials and we'll be yeah. doing that first thing in the morning so I would recommend that they get all of the complaints to the credentials committee first thing in the morning and we'll start working on and interviewing everybody that's involved. I'll let Ralph come in and then we'll get control of this. Mr. Chairman it, it appears to me but it, but Mr. Chairman, it appears to me that it might be proper in order to carry out business 
that we that we certify the list that was presented subject to challenge by by the committee so that that's understood we make a motion to certify the list that was presented earlier well that's what we're subject to but then subject to challenge rather rather than trying to put the challenge on that okay let me try to deal with this in the following sense are you ready for the question does anyone seek recognition what is the question let me read the question discussion of a 10 percent correction rate in delegates and alternates as the next agenda item yes, yes. What? if an amendment is adopted the main motion will read as just stated are you in favor of making this change? Uh, this amendment. At this meeting. At this meeting, yes. Sir. All in favor of the amendment, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, indicate by saying no. No. The ayes have it. I'm sorry, the no's have it. <laughs> division. And the amendment is lost. Call for the division of the House, please. We will do a standing vote. All in favor, would you please rise? All opposed? Okay. Clearly the no's have it. What? I'm not going to count proxies. The no's have it on just a simple standing count. Thank you very much. Your question before the body is to adopt the agenda, Mr. C. Oh, I thought you were you're, you're just standing. I'm sorry. The agenda before you is ready for your approval is there a motion to well we have a motion to approve which has been seconded for nominations national convention delegate for all and this would be I would like to add it at uh, yeah the last item and the interim rule is your second to add, the, the, the motion is to add as the last item of the agenda an interim rule regarding the qualification of nomination as national convention delegate or alternate. We would add that to the agenda and deal with it after we set the deposit. That's what we're proposing to do. All in favor of adding this indicate by saying aye. Wait, who is the second? All those opposed? No second. Where's the second? There's a second. There was a second. Then I'll, I want to make a motion to amend that amendment. Okay. Debbie, did you want to, you have a comment? Well, I'm just wondering what it is we're adding or what we're, what we're discussing. We're, we're setting qualifications for the nomination of the delegates. I'm sorry, is this something from RMC or is this something we're adding? This is basically something that has been suggested from RNC. We're changing the rules. Yeah. Oh. It's a topic that we that we're here. we don't need to discuss it now. You, okay. Lance. So I would motion that we add that time in as a general time to make motions for interim rules and. You want other, to add, and other things can be brought up in it besides just that specific issue. You want to add? I, I want to. I want to expand on that time to allow more than just the particular rule that he wants to address in that time. So a, a time at the end of the convention that's open that we can so bring up the other issues without is to having strike the proposal and add new business. Is that a fair statement? 
Yeah, and then that, that could be accomplished under new business. Okay. Okay. Is there a second for your motion? Okay. It's an amendment to the first, which is essentially a substitution. Any further discussion on, that, on Lance's motion? Hearing none, all in favor of Lance's motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed indicate by saying no. 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 You want to do a standing? Let's do a standing vote to clarify. All Lance's motion, Lance's amendment, is a substitute for the original motion to just add an item. He, he is looking to add new business to the agenda. All in favor of the motion to add new business with additional time to the agenda indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. no. I'm planning to unless it's okay. Those in favor of Lance's motion, please stand. Okay. Those opposed? <laughs> Quick question. Those on the phone indicate are you opposed to, I'm sorry, are you in favor of this motion? Are you opposed to this motion? Is anybody there? <laughs> are you opposed? Opposed? Opposed. Okay, with with those votes, it's clearly overwhelmingly opposed. Thank you. The motion fails. Could we? Now, now is point of order. Yes. This is the second time that it hasn't looked to me that it was clear. Can we start doing numbers when we do standing votes, please? <clears throat> trying to end the agenda item. We're still working on the chair. Okay rules that the point of order is not well taken and the reason being it is a determination made by the chair based on the evidence in front of it. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion. That I'll just make the motion first and I'll discuss it. That we extend the time on the agenda for an additional hour from what, what covers. We have a motion on the floor. We've got to go first. I'm sorry. The pending motion that we're back to is to add discussion of an interim rule regarding qualifications for nominations of the for the nomination of national convention delegates and alternates. All, all, it's the last item on the agenda. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Nay. No. No. Thank you. You've had it. Right. I make a motion that we extend the time, the end time for the FCC meeting by one hour. Is there a second? Second. 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 Based on the second motion, I think looking at where we are on the agenda, we're going to need that. All. Any other discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. no. Thank you. Okay. We have the amended agenda in front of us. All in favor of the amended agenda as presented at this time with that one change indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Ralph and Denny, convention update, please. <coughs> Uh, it's been pointed out to me that we have people voting that should not be voting. Uh, 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 uh,
I got a question about someone ability for the bonus vote, I guess. Well, I'm going to keep this really brief because I know we've got a lot of work to do tonight, and Ralph and I are going to be giving a report to the whole convention tomorrow. I'll just tell you real quick, we were in Phoenix last week at the spring RNC meeting. Uh, some people call it the chairman's meeting, but uh, we were there and did a lot of business. And uh, the most interesting thing right now that's happening is that uh, yesterday I got a note from the chairman of the Louisiana party, and he said, we need help now because the uh, NPV people, the National Popular Vote people, are down there right now hitting them hard. And uh, we sent them the information that they need. Ryan's got the, our packet that we put together from the vote that the RNC took last fall to oppose national popular vote. And uh, I'll tell you, we talked about this subject when we were in Phoenix, and uh, one of the chairman, Chad Conley, and he doesn't mind me telling this, he said I could share this. He's the state chair for South Carolina. He told us he was offered $35,000 if he would get it through the legislature in his state. And so this is so, so important. So it's a guide that we continue to work on. I'm just going to quit for now and I'll leave you with that. Thank you. Debbie has been on the committee for arrangements for the National Convention. She's been one of the representatives from each of the states and is doing a great job. One of the things that we're looking at, we're trying to make sure that we get a middle of the road hotel that doesn't look like it's a Super 8. And uh, she's uh, in there working on that for us, and uh, not too far from the convention center. There, there will be, there will be high security, and uh, we expect to see a lot of demonstrators. The occupied people will probably be there, and uh, they're, they're really spending a lot of money to make sure they've got good transportation, safe transportation, and uh, security at the, at the convention. I know that uh, some of you folks that get to go there. Will enjoy being in Tampa, not in August particularly, but it will be, uh, you know, it'll be a, a good convention, and inside will be air conditioned, so it won't be too muggy. But we're looking forward to this convention being a good kickoff for whoever our candidate might be in the race to take back the White House, and so uh, we're excited about it. And uh, Randy has been also was working on the committee arrangements before the change from Ryan Sprebus, and, and so and prior three, so he's, we've got a lot of experience that's been uh, very helpful in helping us get our, our delegations seated and properly there. So uh, we'll give you a more complete report as to what the, the uh, Republican National Committee is doing tomorrow and give you an idea of some of the things that are happening. One of which, I'll just give you a little preview, in the last year and a half, year four months, what we've done, the committee has, the Republican National Party has gone from a $24 million debt to about a $33 million in the black in that period of time. So, we are back and we are rolling as a Republican uh, uh, party. And uh, thank you very much, Randy. We won't take more of the time. One other thing that you didn't mention, the presidential trust was fully funded, which the money that the party turns over to the candidate uh, as soon as the candidate is established and that is a huge amount of money. It's what, $17 million? Uh, it's 17 or was it 21? That's in addition to the 33 million. And in addition to that, I think there's another 14 million that's been put aside for any legal fights that, uh, that happen afterwards. So there's a lot of money. That, that's a little different kind of money we can raise, but you know, fundraising is an important part of reality. I, I think Ranks has done an incredibly good job. At this time, I want to recognize a problem we have. I don't badger secretaries. I don't run them off deliberately. They just disappear. We have now replaced, a, we now need to replace another secretary who has resigned. Rex resigned back at the end, end of February after serving the probably the shortest tour of duty as elected officer in state party history. Is that a fair statement? No, not quite. <laughs> oh, the other one is there. <laughs> anyway, with that statement, the floor is open for nominations for Assistant Secretary to serve the grand total term of a new record short term, which will last from today until the end of the convention. So it's a two day term.
<laughs> Alice Massey has indicated that she would do it. The vice chairman has just nominated Alice. Is there a second? Second, at least the second chair from uh, District uh, 11. Are there any other nominations for this long-term position? <laughs> You nominate Rebecca Logan. There, there seems to be a, a, a non-positive response. Are there any other nominations? Will we close nominations? Is there no further nominations? I ask for a nomination. Nominations close. And make it by acclamation. All in favor of making them. Her secretary, by assistant secretary, by information indicated by saying so. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> now, we have a, I was going to introduce our legal counsel who's been helping us on financial matters and have you confirm him today, except his real life business job called Ryan Fitzpatrick away. Uh, you want to make a motion to just bring it in as legal counsel for, for the two days so we can then do something else in, in, in 40, 48 hours? Right. I move to appoint Ryan Patrick, official uh, Republican Party last counsel for the duration of this conference. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Thank you very much. Ryan has worked for Senator Stevens years ago and is a private practice lawyer now here in town and has volunteered to assist us and I greatly appreciate his help. Uh, in your packet is an update of every indication that we have of someone wanting to run for state office at this time. I won't go into redistricting today at all, but I wanted to share this with you so you had something to look at because I didn't want to make 500 copies. It's just shared with the system. If you have any questions, call us afterwards. Uh, if you see a large hole somewhere that ought to have a Republican in it, make that part of your mission in the near future. Thank you. First, can you give us a brief report on the race? Okay, well, um, clearly we had a, a little bit more uh, turnouts this afternoon for credentialing than we had anticipated. So I apologize for anybody who had to uh, wait uh, in line, but I think we've gotten through that, uh, over that hurdle. Um, program's on, uh, on track for uh, Friday and Saturday. Um, I think it's gonna be a great convention. Um, if anybody, well, everybody here did get credentials. If anybody's in your district who's not been credentialed, and got their photo ID yet, please have them show up as early as possible tomorrow, 7 a.m. to 10. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, please have them show up and, and do that as early as possible so we can get that done before breakfast and get on with the business of the convention. The next item for consideration is the three page item in your package, which is the convention. Agenda, agenda in general session business order of business page one is the three three day summary and page two and three are strictly the details of the operating session uh, yes sir Mr. Chairman I move that the convention agenda be amended can we first get a motion on the board to accept the new amendment Okay. You want to make a motion to do it to you? Okay, I'll also that we accept the agenda. Is there a second? Now, you're in order. Okay. I'm sorry, what is your name, sir? Peter Goldberg, District 26. Okay, I can write it again. I move that the convention agenda be amended by striking nomination slide selections from 2, 2 10 p.m. on Saturday, April 28, and inserting nominations election at 9.25 a.m. on Saturday, April 28th. Is there a second? 
Second, Chuck Weider, District 4 these days. No, I'm actually the regional, uh, regional chair from the yeah, you're, re you're the regional chair. Yeah. Right, that's right. But yeah. that's a better description. Better to the room. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. We have an, it's been amended, and the amendment's been seconded. Uh, it, okay. Yeah, would you care to extend your motion to move the balance of the times forward? And I extend the motion to move the balance of the agenda forward. Thank you. Does the second accept that? I do. Yes. Okay. Randy, I'm, just, I'm not clear on what's happened. But okay, wait. let me try to restate what, we, what this motion does. It moves the nominations process, the nominations committee report and its resultant action from Nomination. being activities taking place starting at 2.10 2, 2 in the afternoon to being activities taking place at 9.20 in the morning. 9.25. On Saturday. On Saturday. In other words, it, it moves that piece from the afternoon to the morning. And uh, Steve. I would like to it's always an obvious to be done with the report because we usually have enough time for them to get work until the end. Now we would always. Uh, Debbie, I think they have a hand up and then come back. Mr. Johnson? I would speak against this motion because. I understand it correctly. What we're doing is putting the, uh, the election at the beginning of Saturday before any of the reports from any of the committees. Is that what No, ma'am. We would have the communications report and the credentials report. I'm sorry, the campaign and finance report, the communications report, and then if it's ready, we have the first. I mean, that first, the final report from credentials. That is the earliest that we can actually be a voting organization. And we would put this first to give the working committees, the platform committee, and the rules committee additional time, because as you recollect, at prior conventions, we start out trying to get the simplest reports done first, and frequently they're not ready, so we sequence forward, then we go back up, when we get a report, and then we go down, and so we're playing yo-yo all day, and this proposal, I think as I understand it, would give us about two extra, uh, an extra hour plus to move the uh, reports back for later today. My concern is that there's been a question raised as to whether or not our national committee can run for a second term and run for the Senate. And it, it, it seems as though we need to clarify that rule. We have, of course, we passed that rule in 2000 to allow Rick Howler to run again for the Senate and run for National Committee man. And then in 04, we did that again for Ben Stevens. And now, here we are in 2012, and someone says, wait a minute, our National Committee man cannot run for the Senate and the committee man uh, seat. And so I think that we want to make sure we clarify that rule before the election so that we're not out so it, is your proposal then to amend the amendment? Yes. To put the rules report in front of the nominations? In front of the okay. Would you all make that a formal group? I'm sorry. I would like to amend, amend the agenda so that the uh, nominations committee can run for the Senate and the committee So that the rules are commence at 925, given that we have the right to be doing business. Okay. Is there a second for that amendment? Uh, Neil DePerrian, is that a second? <clears throat> Neil DePerrian, District uh, 29. Further discussion on it. Rebecca, do you want to speak to the amendment? Well, I, I guess I just, that, that was a question that I had. I can't clarify that within that person. The question is that oh. the Rules Committee enough time to deal with their business. Like, they're moving all the way from 139. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Any further? See, 
Yes. yes. I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure that's the way it works, but I'd like to make a friendly amendment. That we also strike Friday where it says adjourn at 11.30 and change the word to recess. There's no confusion about adjourning our convention. And also the change uh, four o'clock on okay. okay, that is, you're well within, we're, we're talking about an amendment, which are the amendment. We'll come back to you when we clear this current item, please. Thank you. We'll, 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 we'll get a chance to entertain the we meeting. will come back to you. Okay. Chuck. Okay. I appreciate what Rebecca Logan said about the whole rules committee being finished with its, uh, all of its business, but it could be finished with whatever provisions that they're going to recommend regarding qualifications for nominations and just that part so that the nominations can still no, be No, words, you're suggesting that they could at least do a partial report and clear the field. Yes. 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 Okay. That would be good. With that additional clarification, are we ready to, any further debate? Everybody in favor of the amendment to move a, at least a segment of the rules report before nominations to start at 925 and then the block of time that's assigned for nominations committee reports to follow and then the, nom the balance of the reports to follow. Everybody in favor of that? Amendment indicate by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Now we have an amendment that is okay. The main the main motion is now that the rules committee would be at nine twenty five, and the nominations would start at nine at ten oh five and then move to the balance of the agenda. All in favor of that amendment, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Those opposed? Please. Okay, I move that we strike the word adjourn on Friday, April 27th at 11.30 and substitute it with the word recess. And that we also amend the uh, German sun time to die at 4 o'clock to be um, until all the uh, German at 4 o'clock or when all parties to the test finish. Let's check the motion. Let's the motion. Second. Let's see that one. Point of order. Is, is there a second to split the motion? Point of question. question. Second. Question's been divided. All in favor of dividing the question, indicate by saying aye. Point of order. Point of order. Yeah. Yeah. Can you just explain what happened? So you're going to split, split it up into two motions? Or it splits it into two separate items because one deals with an item on the 27th, the other deals with an item on the 28th. We're splitting okay, that into two. Can we just call a motion out of order and have a, make a motion in It's separate to split it, but we're not going to take anything away. I'm quite happy to make two separate motions. Yeah. Motion is nice. Yeah, well, let's deal with the first half. And keep, keep. As far as motion would be to revise the daily agenda for Friday so that the word adjourn at 11 30 is replaced with the word recess. Is there any debate on this matter? Could, could the baker explain the reason for his motion, please? You can't adjourn. Because uh, we don't adjourn. The, I just don't want the word adjourn in this convention agenda until the convention's over because we won't even have okay. anybody certified. It seems Okay. Then he's also, are we talking about the committee? Committee adjournment there on Friday that we're talking about? Well, it says daily agenda here. This is the the, the, the view of, that has been shared with me by the parliamentarian is very simple. We're adjourning the first meeting of the convention. We're not adjourning the convention. 
the general the, session. The, the general session. Uh, we we'll have adjourned the, the first session. session. Then we re we convene the following morning in the second session, okay. which would say that this is the proper way to characterize a two session operation. That's correct. The, the basic effect is if the assembly recesses rather than adjourns, that would preclude certain motions to suspend the rules under renewal of motions, and other motions, it would also preclude certain motions to reconsider and enter on the minutes. That's the parliamentary effect of changing from adjourn to recess. No. It, it, it is just adjourning the first. No, just that. Yeah. According to my understanding, what we shared with me when we had put this together, this is the exact process from Roberts. And I, well, and I, I, I agree with that. Looking at the wording, any word sometimes is, is a devil. The whole convention got adjourned. Actually, it got peace out there. I just think it's important to hear the language. I'm fine with adjourning for the night. That's what we're That's what well, we're, we're adjourning. And then the, 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 the agenda that you're approving brings us back the next day. Okay. Thank you. Is there any objection to withdrawing the motion? No. No. Thank you. Oh. Can you speak up, please? My first official since he said so I'm learning. So I now move the the Saturday session. At four o'clock, where it says the German time died, time died, instead of being replaced with, um, I just move that we adjourn at four o'clock or when all convention business is finished. So that we don't have an artificial end time forcing us to end our business if we're not done. I second the motion. second. And then the second is by Brent Cole. Brent Cole, District 34, Gomez Cole. Uh, you want to make a comment? Yeah. You, you were first. I'm okay. the corner by I saw you. District 16. District 16. It seems to me that the benefit of having that four o'clock time frame is to allow people who have got plane reservations that evening to leave without fear that the convention will go off and do something without them. And for those people who could stay, um, that they will not be acting without a point. So I, I kind of like a fixed ending time. I think we can always amend the agenda at 355 that we need to, but I, I support uh, keeping an, an end time on the agenda. There's a really, I think, a more pragmatic consideration here, which is that the facility isn't available to us much beyond that time. The Hilton Hotel has another large conference coming in right behind us. So as soon as we're gone, they're going to be breaking down this entire facility to the next group. So our, our, we have bought our time for them, you know, during a reasonable time frame. Ten minutes later, we might not be in the world, but we, we can't just stay in their hotel and hold well, the point of, point of discussion also, I talked to the hotel and the figures you mentioned they're getting ready for it doesn't happen until Monday. So they would be able to be more flexible. Uh, further than that, we have an alternative location already reserved exactly across the street from here, which has no limit on it. And so we could move there if we had to. Okay. Uh, Ralph and then Stan and then Lance. We have a discussion with RNC and their parliamentarian that once this agenda is approved, that it would be improper to, be, to make a motion in, in, later on to, to extend the agenda. 
Yeah, the, the agenda is, as presented right now simply says the convention chairman or the convention by a two-thirds vote is authorized to make necessary adjustments to the convention order of business, which of course includes expanding the time. So this is covered if there is a desire to continue. Thank you. Uh, let me go back there. Dan Sandler. That was, that was the point I was raising. Okay, Lance. Uh, I'd like to speak, guys. I'd like to speak to the motion. You know, too often in these meetings, uh, we tend to rush and not get all the things done that we need to get done. And I hope that we can do things differently this year and make sure that we have everything accomplished and not leave it the feeling that we just didn't get it all done. Um, just uh, that part, uh, last game of Republicans have had the pleasure of. Uh, going to a couple of the uh, convention planning meetings. In our discussions with the hotel, just to clarify, we spoke with them a couple of days ago. The, the other meeting does start on Monday, but they have movers coming in Saturday night, Saturday evening, to start setting up. So although the other function doesn't start, they do have a long set of time. And we did clear, we, we talked to them ahead of time. They're expecting us to adjourn at the process before o'clock and get moving out shortly thereafter. So so, okay. Okay. So, okay. Just to be you have spoken a number of times. I did want to clarify that, that that point of fact. You said we had a full extra day, and I wanted to make sure people knew that. No, we don't. Mr. Chairman, I object to this whole line of discussion. Um, Mr. Cutler is not at the authorization meeting to negotiate contractual issues with the hotel. The convention committee has done that. We've had this discussion with them. Those of you who were here in the last 48 hours will note that we've had teams of people setting up this facility for 24 hours straight. It takes just as long to break it down. This is, a, this is a business. This is an enterprise, a private business. Are we, gonna, are we really going to impose our lack of schedule? Well, like I said, okay, I, I, you're not recognized right now. Bruce, would you please identify who you were for the record? I, I'm sorry. No. Bruce Hill, Mr. Tony Longman, the convention chair. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> As Mr. Seekins pointed out, since the two-thirds vote, we do have the ability to adjust or extend the time. Also, I believe the last two conventions we adjourned at 2 o'clock or earlier. Um, that in mind, I think it was about 4 o'clock, I'm sure. So, uh, Rex. Mr. Chairman, if you extend the date, or you extend the time past the, the deadline on the agenda, might it not also leave some folks who have arrangements to get out of town um, with with some sort of departure issues that they may, their votes, which are important, may not be counted? So well, that was the original point, Mr. Wittershaw. Okay, and I... Uh, let's go for it. Mr. not true that if we're getting close to German, we can hold on all remaining motions together on the spot and close it down. Yeah, you, you, that is correct. You would vote on all remaining business to make sure that nothing was left undone. So we can finish on yes. that. Yes. I, I will ignore that rather than going through a, a debate limiting. Yes. Okay. I, I'll take two more comments. If, uh, <coughs> yes, sir. Yes, the Richard Sherman District 36. I was just saying it's really important we finish all of our business. And, you know, I know that's the goal. Yes. Finish all of our business, make sure that nothing's left undone. So, for the, we can be. For the record, there's been some substantial misinformation at times. We have never moved elections to the Central Committee. We have never moved platform items to the Central Committee. We moved some, plat some resolutions to the Central Committee several years ago that were not right to be voted on, and they weren't even voted on at the next Central Committee meeting. It took some additional time to resolve them. We finished the agenda in 10. We finished the agenda in 8, with the exception of some items that were natural resource items that had to be referred to law. Yes, ma'am. 
just a comment, but if we're concerned about the agenda uh, and we got time on Friday, why don't we move some stuff to Friday? Well, on Friday we have all the committee meetings and we have to have credentials do all their work to figure out who is proper to vote. So, I mean, we have several sequential business items. I appreciate your point. But we have a number of things that fit together, much like the building blocks of building a house. We've got to put the hot water heater in at the right time. So that's what we're going to try to do. Yes? Randy, uh, just to point of clarification, somebody just mentioned that if, if, because we did just move the rules of nominations to the start of the day on Saturday, that we'll get everything else back. If we get to the point where we're short for time, we have some type of parliamentary method for voting on all remaining like, well, well, and first of all, the agenda that's before you says we can extend the time by two thirds vote at that time. Correct, but I'm just also saying, look, trying to recognize that there are people who are scheduled to be. Yeah. In case you that, we do have a way to do it all the business in the short amount of time. There's a, there's, and it'd be the will of the body whether you go to some kind of a slight, a two minute drill type environment or if you extend the time. Uh, Ms. Perry. Chair Perry, District 12, I see two conflicting things. One person is saying we can't extend the time because we have a limit, 4 o'clock, in the hotel. Other people are saying we can extend the time with two-thirds vote. Well, it's contradictory. Two days. I think the, the issue is you may be able to extend for a short period of time to facilitate getting work done, but a very short period of time because of the need for us to clear the facility. And yes, there, to clarify, the, the hotel will be moving in later on that evening. We do have a little bit of flexibility, but we don't have enough flexibility to make a motion like this, which leaves it open-ended, to continue business until we just feel business is done. So as long as it's completed within a reasonable amount of time, the hotel is expecting us to turn at about 4 o'clock, which is a whole lot later than that, then we're, then we're Violating our contract. All in favor of the motion park down the street. before us, which is to replace the adjourned sign and die and insert adjourn it for or when all business is done. If you're in favor of that motion, you keep it saying aye. 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 If you're opposed, say no. No. Any vote? No. 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 Okay, thank you. Just one question you from the smallest parliament area. Can you just clarify the difference between recess and adjournment? The question is, is my insert recess and adjournment? Well, for those of you who have Robert's Rules of Order, you can look at page 85. And the, the, the basic that there are some differences that aren't relevant to this convention which relate to the way that business is carried over from one to the other. The basic difference is that there is a rule that a motion to suspend the rules can only be renewed, uh, cannot be renewed for the same purpose or in the same meeting. So if you, if you were to recess instead of adjourn, the effect would be that that motion if, if you adjourn one meeting and then start it the next day, the effect would be you could offer the same a motion to suspend the rules for the same purpose on both days. Uh, if you recess, you could. And, and the other thing is that the motion to reconsider and run the minutes uh, is something that can be has to be offered on the same day as the motion to be reconsidered, um, in, or on the the last meeting of a convention. Uh, and if you had two meetings on the same day, for example, then you could offer reconsider and enter on the minutes. Very technical stuff, but that's the answer to the question. Thank you. I'd now like to see no further debate. Vote on the main motion to adopt the agenda as per, I'm sorry, the agenda as amended. All in favor and keep it saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. I appreciate all your hard work. In front of you now is a temporary roll of every individual that we have been able to find that is approximately 511 or 510. 
I believe it's 511 individuals. If anybody is rat holding a couple of these, please share them with, with the fellow members. We printed enough for every member of the committee. They're almost all here, but we shouldn't be out. If you're not a voting delegate and you have one, would you share it presently so the members Absolutely not. The list has been reviewed against the state voter registration list, and many of the addresses that we had were corrected based on the fact that the state now has the, those people re-registered in a new address. So those changes have been made. We, I think, we deleted one or two people who were well we we deleted a couple of people who were alternates from the delegate list and put them back on the alternate list so that if you started on the alternate list you're on the alternate list now if you if the page was full and we could read the name that was marked through we put it back on the delegate list so that we have captured the maximum number of delegates and we have bumped surplus people who were on list back to the top of the, the alternate list rather than having them moved up to try to maximize the number of people that we report to minimize the concerns that were being shared. So everybody who's ever been on a list as a delegate is now on this delegate list. For example, in your district... In my district, I have a guy who is not a delegate, but he's added to the list. He's the top person on your list. But he's not a delegate. He was on your delegate form certified to us as a delegate. Yeah, we can work. He was not. I gave you the minutes. His name doesn't appear anywhere in the minutes, okay. nor in the election. Okay. We have conflict. We have a certification of the delegate form. We use that, and if the person doesn't appear, the person isn't around, that can be resolved as a credentials matter, but we want it to be absolutely inclusive of all possible. I understand that, but as, as he wasn't a delegate, how does he get added to the delegate list if he wasn't a delegate? Because he's on your certified delegate list, sir. He's not on the certified delegate list. He was at the district convention, and he left before any elections, so he was not a delegate. District 17, the top name on the list. We'll, we'll, we'll show you later. This well, is I, I have a copy of it. I know what you're talking about. No, we showed up to the district convention, and once they talked about delegate fees, he split. So he never made any votes. He was not elected. He's no delegate. And yet he's on the list, which actually prompts somebody who is a delegate to an alternate delegate position. Okay. Okay. We, that's, can we resolve these? That would be a credentials issue when it's like we're talking about somebody who's not a delegate. Okay. Since you, gave us, okay, since you gave us very little information, we tried to capture everything that looked like it might be a delegate. I thought I gave you perfect information. It was even a pretty, you even said it two minutes, it was pretty darn good, compared to some of the minutes you received. And his name didn't okay. appear anywhere in Okay, minutes, okay. what I would like to do, rather than working each of these issues today, bring those to the Credentials Committee tomorrow morning, because these are disappearances. And they will allow the person that is on, on your alternate list to move up. What is a disappearance? They're a non-reporting. They, they're non. You can remove them. Who added them? Tomorrow morning. An appearance, like he appeared all of a sudden out of nowhere. He's all, the only piece of paper we have from your district that went into one of our files. I'm sorry. We were trying to be responsive to the allegations we were omitting people. That actually makes sense. So you just threw him in because... No, he was there. Well, he was there at the district convention, but not elected, and he wasn't a delegate. And he actually bumped the delegate into an alternate position, which is... Okay, okay. Thank you very much for... Is there a motion on the floor? There's a motion on the floor to adopt this list of delegates. Is there any further? I have a list, and I don't think that will make sense. I mean, we're going to have some of that fun. That's what that will be replaced as soon as the Credentials Committee does their work. Oh, yes. Yeah. 
How did you want to do that? For clarification, this is, as I see it, is the motion is to approve the temporary resolution. Temporary That's the list of the district is on the delegate list. Subject to examination of the committee. Absolutely. I would move. I would move. I would move to amend the motion to include the word subject to approval by. The no, I have, I have everything. Seeing no debate, all in favor, Mr. Seekers, motion. Aye. 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 Any opposed? So you thank you. But I have more. Now, the motion as amended. All in favor of the motion as amended, and keep it saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Now. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to uh, apologize to you and the uh, committee uh, district chairman that are there. Uh, I was unable to uh, either attend or call in today uh, uh, during your earlier meeting, and uh, I know that. Uh, I'm uh, sorry that I couldn't have been there. I'm still here in Juneau uh, dealing with uh, problems that we have here, but I didn't want the chairman uh, and uh, any delegates there to know that um, so we appreciate the support that we get from uh, our groups, and uh, we need all that we can to elect uh, good Republicans to the uh, House of Representatives and the Senate. Mike, I believe there's zero dissent to your concept. Uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> We're ready. Thank you. Do you about the Senate Yes, Mr. Uh, see if we have a couple more issues on with the foot. Well, Parnell pulled the bill. Pretty much it. I'd like the courtesy of about a 15 minute recess so we can continue our concentration back. So what? Thank you. So check this well, it is going to be truly 15 minutes, not 34. Are we done? Are we taking a 15 minute break? I have the opportunity, if the body approves the striking, then I would have the opportunity to appoint someone else, according to Roberts. Well, I'd like to strike. Is there a second? I'll second that. the motion is to strike Frank McQuarrie as co-chair of the Rules Committee. All in favor of striking Frank, indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. no. Division of the House. Division of the House. Let's have a standing division. Okay, would all of the guests who are in the room please move over to the far side? There's not many of you here, but are I second that motion. You want to, you want to, you want to move to, you want to move to formally do a ballot vote. Paper ballot. All in favor, and you keep us saying aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Fails. I thought it's in my move for paper ballot. It was not a mad kind of thing. I'm so did I. I can't hear you. I didn't recognize it. Therefore, it's really hard to do. I'm sorry. I thought if you moved for a, a vote on ballot, it was an automatic. No. 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 Yeah. 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 No.
by holding up both hands, not as a surrender, but as an indication that you have the property. <laughs> Please, all in favor of... Sorry. All in, all in favor of the motion to do a secret ballot vote. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a ballot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ballot vote. Oh. 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 Those in favor of the ballot vote, please stand. And as I indicated, show oh, that's been too late. Uh, your hand if you have a proxy. Okay, those opposed, please stand. Those on the phone? Who's on the phone? Chairman, obviously not voting. So it's fans. What? What? Yeah. Yes. So we, we now proceed to the vote on Mr. McQuarrie. Those in favor of striking Mr. McQuarrie indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed to striking Mr. McQuarrie indicate by saying nay. Nay. Mr. McQuarrie, Mr. McQuarrie is not struck from the list of the chairman at this time. Uh, any further comments? All in favor of adopting the list of chairman as presented, indicate by saying aye. Did you have more corrections on that? I'm sorry? Are you going to make all the corrections on that? Is there other corrections on that? I will correct the, uh, the phone numbers, I believe, are correct. I went to Great Lakes to correct them. I have no idea right now, Mike, where those other numbers came from. I think they were the numbers of last year's chairman that I had buried in the NHC, so we will fix them. Thank you for the, for the, for the reminder. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Okay, I'm sorry, let me go back to Rebecca. She had a question. No, I was just going to say that I'm the person from District 23 who I think there's a question about whether or not I'm the nomination process. I am listed as a co-chair of resources. I'm happy with Robert. I thought you were done. Well, I think there's a question about whether or not I am. Am I the person that you're referring to? Okay, so I'm happy to do that. That makes it easier for that convention. Okay. Having resolved, have now identified that issue, question before the body is to approve the list of co-chairs for the operating committees tomorrow. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, indicate by saying no. Thank you. Thank you. I assume that was not relevant to me here. I sure did not. At this time before you are the committee assignments from the temporary role. And I do want to commend the chairman. We ultimately got more information from the chairman, either in terms, and I'll, I'll give 
Kevin Kasher, credit for probably the most precise work. We, I, I had one question, he turned it around and had it back to me within uh, 45 minutes. That's sort of role model performance. A couple of people said things that we lost that I had to get twice. But the total feedback on committee preferences, committee assignment processes, was probably the most participatory that I have seen in my years as chairman. Generally, I wind up with several hundred people that I have almost no clue what they want. You guys, yeah, it's been a great job. If there is a, I've had several questions come up about some issues about being on the wrong committee, send me a note. So that, or give me a note today so we can change this because tomorrow we're going to do a roll call for each committee. So if, if, if you're in your district and somebody has decided they really want to be on a different committee and you can do a one-for-one -one swap, let us know. And we'll try to fix that and have that to the committee and then tomorrow. Are you going to be a convention tomorrow? If, if you do it late and don't give it to us, Give the person making the trade a note from other to literally identify who you're replacing so that when they call the roll, they know that Joe's not coming, but Jane's there. So that we have some sense of an understanding that the committees that we built with all your input are correct. Now, there's one item that I want to remind you of one more time. I will call this. Donnelly Curse, David Silver. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Our rules now forbid okay. you from being on the nominations Thanks. committee and being a delegate, like the delegate, alternate, uh, I think mm -hmm. elector, or an alternate elector. One person already come to me saying, I need to get off the nominations yeah. committee for them. Hope yeah. to be selected as a delegate. Yeah. If you're in that situation, okay. and I don't care what campaign you're from, let us know so we can fix that. That's something I want to fix for sure in the documentation process, so there's no question about a violation of the rules by an individual. Randy, um, if you want to include officers, people running for office, or just the delegates and the alternates for the convention? Mr. Donnelly, your rule is, includes all, doesn't it? Delegates, alternates, and you know, electors. Does it include officers or not? No. Okay, it does not include officers. Okay. Right, thank you. So you're done. So, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, Fred. Uh, so just to make sure, there are a number of issues. What's your name, sir? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Brandon Wall, nine. So just to make sure, uh, there's a number of items on on uh, the uh, committee assignments um, that uh, weren't what uh, oh, well, what uh, the delegates in my district requested. If there's more than a one-for-one -one swap in some places on the platform assignments, will we be able to accommodate those? Okay, one of the things we... Let me first, I'll come back to you in a minute. I'll just to give us some guys stuff. I'm running without cover. Can I have a motion to approve a committee assignment subject to the approval of the chair to do the swap so we can keep the committee straight? Moved by. Thank you. Is there a second? Dr. Rubin back. Dr. Rubin back. Any discussion on the swaps? Yeah. Talk to your committee chair. I feel like they're on the one person's stage and the organized place where everybody can get the delegate list and the committee. You're, you're, that is, I can't help. Thank you. Uh, any further comments on the swaps? Oh, yes, sir. 
We got some, but not many. My question is, you want to somebody So, we don't have why don't you come to me afterwards? We'll, we'll work. Yeah. I'll let, let it clear that you want to speak to motion? I believe I do. I need to ask a point of information. Okay. Are we at the point where we are making motions about changing some of these committee assignments? No. Okay. We're going to approve the fact that you can make swaps. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of them? Allowing swaps to be made as well, and then advising the chair of what you're doing. Indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Now, let me go back to Brandon's question. The one thing that we've always tried to do, and some of you may not have heard this, if you have 12 or 13 or 14 delegates, well, first of all, let's start out with uh, District 37, you guys have three, therefore you can be on very few committees. Other committees get covered as you get towards 12, as District 12 has 12. If you get above 12, you start heading into a second round of placements, normally in the platform committees. One of the things we have tried to avoid doing, and occasionally we see this, we're five or six people from one district that has 12, 13, 14 people all want to be first choice on one committee. That kind of means that they're going to run that committee and they have no input on the rest of the state. We've always encouraged people to distribute their votes so that they're, even though some of the people make it their third choice, it's still their third choice. So let's talk about that afterwards. I don't remember exactly the details when we looked at your data. We can work that. Anything else? Uh, so, so now that we've made the motion to swap, is now the appropriate time to make motions on swaps? Okay. Is now the appropriate time to make motions on the swaps? On no, changes? Just, just, just send them to me so we can include them in the data sheet. <laughs> no, I actually need to, I have one that I, it isn't a direct swap and it isn't my district. I need to make a motion for it. And I just need to know when the time is that okay, I can make that motion. Let's hear what it is. I don't think we need to okay. do that. I want a motion for the Credentials Canvassing Committee in District 27 that Pope Nelson is replaced by Evan Cutler, and I can speak to that if I get a second. 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 Okay. I'll speak to that. Uh, uh, your name, sir. I'm sorry. Lance Roberts, District yeah, 5. You, you okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Got it. So, yeah, that's not within district, so go ahead. Okay, so. Um, Evan is, uh, as some know, he's put up a web page with the whole alternate and delegate list, which we got late, and with all the errors in it, with a correcting thing where people could add on him, so he has a lot of corrections. He's done a lot of footwork for credentials, and I think he would be a valuable asset on the committee so we can get some of these straightened out. And uh, so that's why I would hope you would support this motion. Any further discussion on this? No, there was a second. There was a second. Okay. Um, well, I'd just like to say in favor of uh, Hope and Nelson saying on the credentials committee, she's done that for so many years, decades, and years. Knowledge and experience would be very valuable on that committee. And what I'd like to suggest is that that, that motion be withdrawn, and another motion be that. And has been placed on the credentials committee, so at his point of view could be heard. But there's no reason to take Pope Nelson off. What is your name, sir? Tucker Lynn Babcock. Thank you. Sorry, thank you. So I'm hoping that would fix that. I want to make the motion to do. I'm not seeking to amend it, but I'm hoping you'll try. Am I allowed to modify the motion to accommodate the speaker? Is there, is there any objection to modifying? Is there a second objection? I have a point of information. There, if this body agrees, is there any problem with that? Work that problem before we get there. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Frankly, I was offended about some of the information that Mr. Cutler has been sending out saying it's from the Alaska Republican Party. I've had hundreds of calls from people saying that 
this information is wrong, that information is wrong. Mr. Cutler sent an email to Randy saying, send me what you've got right away, right or wrong. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be complete. He got the working product. He published it on the web. It was supposed to go to the district chairs for corrections and improvements, and it did not. Mr. Cutler published it. He had no authority to do that, and I'm quite offended that he took that upon himself, and I do not think that he should be on credentials because the information that he has is not correct, and he's falsified some things, and I don't appreciate oh, it. Okay. Let me, let me, I would like to speak up. Uh, let me first deal with, does, I'm sorry? The restatement is just to add Evan Cutler. Is there an objection to the change in the motion? Does anyone object to the motion? Does, any, does anyone object to changing the motion? We're permitting it to change. Hearing none. So now we are in point where the motion before the body is to add the district to, to the Credentials Can Canvassing Committee, District 27, an extra person, specifically Evan Cutters. Wait a minute. Um, since I was, this, since somebody just made allegations about me, out of order. Or no, no, that's out of order. 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 A point of information is, is, is a question. And that is not a question, and we've been... Well, I just wanted to turn the accusation. Okay, I know. Well, what's, what's appropriate is you seek recognition to debate. It's not a point of information, it's just a request. You seek recognition and you debate. Yeah, I seek recognition to debate because I've had allegations against my integrity and I feel that it's a choice. Speak up, please. I seek it. I seek opportunity to debate because I've just heard allegations of shooting my integrity and I wish to debate that. Go ahead. Okay, first of all, the party rules from my understanding say that the Alaska Republican delegate and alternate list are to be made public 10 days before this convention. And it's true, I did ask for whatever he had as soon as he had it so that I have something to see. That's not what I published on the website. But I did send that on email to everybody that was on the list. The one that he gave me Monday was only a delegate list, not the alternate list, as required by the rules. And it, it did say first delegate list. I emailed it to the people on the list, and I got more than 20 bounced back emails, so the emails were obviously wrong on the list. And then multiple other people wrote to me, dozens of people wrote to me telling me that there were problems with it. So here we are waiting for this revised list, which I asked for. And we got a revised list on Friday. At this point, another four days has passed, four and a half days, and we're not at 10 days before the convention. There was no way for me to email everybody, especially when their email addresses are wrong, um, to have them bounce back and be able to give everybody a chance to look at this information. Nobody else was making this effort, but I've learned that there were so many complaints about it that something needed to be done. I am part of the Republican Party, I'm on the State Central Committee, and I'm an elected bonus vote. So I only send out emails with my credentials, not claiming to be the Alaska Republican Party or anything like that, but just a member of the State Central Committee. I set up the website, it's a matter of public record. Our rules say that our, our, our delegate names are public record. I did not violate our rules. I did not, I made sure the site is not searchable by Google so that it's a temporary thing, it's not being indexed and searched because I do understand people privacy, but it's still a public record. In fact, every one of us who pays delegate fees are going to be on the computers with their name and address anyway with the FCC in three months when they do the report. 
So I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I'm trying to advocate because so many people have complained to me that there are problems. And they, I've heard many examples of, of these problems. And I set up the system so I don't have to deal with 150 emails. And I go, what do I do with them? Instead, it automatically generates a report to his office so they can see the corrections. And it generates a spreadsheet that we can output the credentials. And the first version of that is, is not very well formatted, but I brought it here. And it is literally, there's, there's, a, lot. there's a lot of things here. And a lot of, I have a lot of other information from the users. I, I believe it. That's the potential why I posted that on that website. And I'm quite happy to take the website down when the convention's over after the credentialing is done. But it's serving its purpose right now. It's a fair and just thing to do. I didn't do it from Eric or upset yeah. anybody, and it's not live. For the comments. Um, Mr. Chairman, Rick Shannon, Blunt Post, uh, District 11. Um, I've, I've, been, I've been led to understand that um, Mr. Cutler's quite good with computers and, uh, and has a good past in terms of programming and such like that. Perhaps a better place for him is to be beneficial on, on the communications uh, committee if he's not already there as opposed to worrying about credentials. If he was interested in it, looking at what was going on, I think we all had the opportunity to kind of look and see that. But I would say, a man of his experience, from what I understand, he ought to be on the credentials. My email probably bounced because I've got a pretty heavy filter. And uh, and if I don't know somebody, from my understanding, it'll, it'll bounce. So if, if you got one for me, that's probably why you got one for me. Uh, right. Frank McQuarrie, Assistant Director, uh, Aero Rules Committee Chair. I, would, I object to the placing of Mr. Cutler on the Credential Committee. As we all know, he's the chair of the Ron Paul campaign in Alaska. That campaign has been engaging in devious practices. And I've asked more calls personally and I've called <laughs> multiple people who have called and represented themselves at first as the Republican Party. As yes. information to delegates here, and for some of the viewers that the number of those I'm questioning, they did confess to it was Ron Paul. I also, and I don't know whether Kevin is a chief of Wolf's Clothes or a Wolf of Chief Clothes, but in the bio that he published himself as part of the TEDx conference last year in Anchorage, his assertions were that he was the founder of the Green Party. We don't want to hear somebody make accusations yeah. and stuff. He's a Republican. You could have looked at the glass house and shouldn't throw stones. I don't want to hear the Ron Paul campaign. I am a volunteer organizer of a Facebook group called Alaskans for Ron Paul 2012. The Ron Paul King campaign has, has contacted me and backed us up on certain things. I'm not paid by them. I am a Republican Party member here in Alaska, and I have been for five years. And I was a national office delegate in 2008 for Ron Paul. I'm just very in support of that candidate, so I work hard for it. But I am not the chair of the Ron Paul campaign in Alaska. I am a volunteer organizer of the volunteer group. Okay. I I would like to move the previous question. Yes. Is there a second? Could you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> the question is to whether we're going to vote now on the previous question. Now, what was the previous question that we were voting on okay. previously? <laughs> the previous issue is to add Evan to the credential committee. This is a motion to end debate. All in favor of the motion to essentially end debate at this time on this matter, indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay. I'm oh, sorry. We have to rise. I'm going to correct another parliamentary. Rise if you're in favor of cutting off debate. Thank you. Those opposed to cutting off debate, please rise. <laughs> you are in my army, sir. Okay. The question before the body is to add Evan Cutler to the Canvassing and Credentials Committee as an extra member of the committee. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. 
Kevin is not in. Division. Division. Can we have a count, Bill? Because we just see you counting. We can't tell what you're counting. I move that you spell out loud as you count those. Or have people sit down as you count Second. We have a second. Motion to take a Kelly vote is before us. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. no. Well, we want to make sure we don't get an accurate count or something. Yeah. The parliamentary advises me that the vision of the house is an uncounted vote, standing vote. My decision based on the vote I heard is that we will not take the county vote because the nays prevail. We will now take a standing vote on whether to add Mr. Cutler based on the division of the house that Debbie has requested. Those want to add him, please stand. And if you have a proxy, raise a hand. I think everybody is right there. I find 26 votes, including Eddie. Well, I would have missed it. I look back. All of those opposed to adding Mr. Cutler, please stand. And raise your hand if you're very proud. It's turning into 30 minutes. I have an administrative problem. You're most standing. Yes. I have at least 43 standing on his part, yeah. For the motion fails. I hope not, but. Any further debate or amendment at this time to the committees? Here, here, hearing none, the question is to approve the committees. <laughs> the last person on the phone gave up on us, or got cut off. By like hanging up, they called that. Yeah, please. The, uh, The question is on approving the roll as amended with the stipulation that if you want to bring changes to us, do that in, as soon as you can so we can incorporate those for the actual roll tomorrow for your various working committees. Please, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Now, there's been a lot of discussion, a little bit of confusion, and I apologize for us not getting this done about three months ago. That was an item that was left off the agenda three months ago, four months ago, eight months ago. We worked all kinds of convention issues. We have not set the deposit for a delegate to go to Nashville. Debbie, you want to come up and help me? I'm 
securing the hotel, and we, we should be finding out, um, maybe this week yet, uh, which hotel we'll be in, but we have requested a mid-range hotel. We could have asked for a low-range hotel, but um, even though these prices are very high, I've got to tell you, the low-range hotel would be like possibly, I don't know, super eight-ish. Yeah, and hotel six-ish. And anyway, it's not that much more to get the mid-range. And so we're... What we're proposing is a $1,600 hotel deposit, and that covers, I believe we, we figured that up with taxes and a couple of breakfasts. And uh, so we're going to have meetings together. We're going to be breakfast meetings where we're going to have speakers come in. Now, what, what we're going to have people do is put down the deposit. They'll either write a personal check or give their credit card information. And uh, if, if you do not get elected to be an alter, a delegate or an alternate, you'll get your money back. If if um, if you tell us after you're elected uh, that you have got alternative housing, you've got a sister or brother that lives down there in Tampa, then you can get your most of it back. They'll, they'll keep a little bit for breakfast, but the hotel portion of it will be refunded. If you if they want they want you to see they want to see an airplane ticket to show that you really are going down there. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that there's some erroneous information that that if you pay this deposit and get elected and then something happens and you can't go, you can't get your money back. It depends on the situation. If your spouse dies, if your house dies, if your house burns down, we're talking something big happens in your life that you can't go, then you're gonna have the money refunded. Okay? But if you just changed your mind and got to thinking about it, decided you didn't want to do it, I'm not sure if they'll give the money back. Is that? What we have done in past years, if you resign fairly quickly and we have an opportunity to replace, we will keep maybe a quarter if this, as we get in the last couple of months before and the likelihood of finding a victim to replace you in the delegation diminishes, we probably refund half. I don't think we have ever kept someone's money in this entirety that resigned a month out. The other thing is, someone asked me about this, and they had a valid question. We didn't used to do it this way. Why are we doing this? And we didn't used to do it this way. It used to be that when you went to National, you showed up at the hotel, and you gave them the credit card at the desk, just like you do if you're checking in any other hotel. But it's not that way anymore. We have to pay the money to the hotel well in advance for the whole kit and boodle. So that's why. And we had difficulties years ago uh, when we were doing it the other way, that people would get elected to be a delegate or an alternate, and they would not come. And then there we are at the national convention, and we have, we're missing you know half a dozen delegates. And, and I know that's what alternates are for, but at national it's different than at our state convention, where here at the state convention, if you're elected an alternate, you may or may not show up here. But I'm telling you, everybody goes to national. If you're elected as an alternate, you're gonna go. And at least in the other states, that's how it is, and that's how we would like it to be. We want, we want to have as much participation from our state as possible. We're, uh, we're allowed to have 24 delegates and 24 alternates, plus chairman, committee man, and committee woman. We would like to have all of those places filled, 
and, and really you do a disservice if you if you get elected to delegate or alternate to national and then you just don't go. You know, there's somebody else that wanted to go that missed out on that because you didn't do that. So I, I know most of the folks here that are considering going or putting their names in to be delegates or alternates are very serious about it and very um, very committed to doing that, following through on that on that commitment. But we, we just want to make sure that everyone understands that uh, not just the delegates, but the alternates are really expected to show up at Tampa. You'll have a great time. I'll tell you, you need to be there August 26th, unless you're elected to be on a committee. And there are four committees. Um, there's resolutions and platform rules. Oh, yeah. what are the other two? Credentials and what's the permanent organization. And if you're going to be there for one of those committees ahead of time, you need to be there, I believe, on the Monday previous to the 26th of August. Now I don't have my calendar in front of me, but that's what it is. And full seven days earlier than, than the convention. The other thing is, uh, just to let you know ahead of time, yes, it's hot and mighty in Tampa. Everywhere we're going, it's got air conditioning. And the hotels are not next to the convention site. There's like uh, one embassy suites that they tell me is 400 bucks a night and not really that nice, and they'll probably give it to the media. <laughs> there's, there's a Marriott, and they think that will be um, the, the headquarters of our nominee. And there's a, I think it's a Hilton, I don't remember, but a third, a third hotel right there, and that will be the headquarters of the RNC. Everybody else is going to be bussed in. And Ryan's told us he wanted us to be sure and tell you guys there is no governor, there is no senator, and there is no congressman that can get you next to the convention center. He said, expect a 30-minute bus ride. And uh, that's just how it's going to be. I, I'm hopeful that because we've requested a, mid, a mid-grade hotel, there's a possibility we may be stationed on the beach, and you might actually see some of real Florida pretty uh, country down there. It's very, very beautiful, they tell me some of those areas, but anyway, just to let you know ahead of time that that's what the situation is. Pardon? Oh yes, the other thing is, if after you're elected, and you can kind of make plans with your buddies ahead of time, but you can't know for sure if your friend is going to get elected and you're going to get elected, but after the elections are over, and you've gotten elected to be a delegate, and your friend is a delegate or an alternate, then the two of you could make arrangements to share a hotel room, in which case we will refund you know, half the hotel to each of you. So that's the And fees will be deposited, okay? For a couple? No, no, if you've got two delegates that are sharing a room, they'll pay 800 each or something close to that, because the breakfast, you're not going to share breakfast, so it'll be somewhere close to that. Mr. Cutler? I know a lot of our delegates are far, far away, and the state has just spent all their money on things that can be here, and we've mentioned to you in Ohio. Is it supposed to be expectation about how that's going to have to check if somebody gets elected? In other words, are you going to have any greater people that need two weeks and four weeks to save their money? I will give you the story from last year, four years ago. We had a lady who provided us a credit card to secure her McCain delegate status. And she begged, pleaded that her credit card would be good soon. Then she gave us a different one after it bounced, uh, what, twice or three times twice? Okay, I'm sorry. She wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Okay. Um, we got a second credit card, and by then we'd gone through about six weeks of negotiating. If I had a tenant that didn't pay me in six weeks, my business wouldn't be doing real well. I was thinking like two weeks. Well, in, the, in this particular case, I would prefer, we will process deposits immediately because it's very important because the, there are alternates that will make other plans and not go to convention, and we're gonna elect some alternate alternates who if they think there's chances of them going or slim, they will make other plans and will be prevented from participating in what may be a once in a lifetime process. So my view is we will process checks and credit cards 
next Monday. I thought about processing them tomorrow, but that's kind of tough. So we'll process them Monday. I would make a motion to approve the $1,600 fee for hotel deals. Second. This is the amount that will be with your deposit, with your nomination form to be a delegate or alternate tomorrow morning. That needs to be in by 10 o'clock. I want to say that free time. It needs to be in by 10 o'clock so we can go to the nominations committee because I don't want someone to wake up saying, I didn't get my form in. Tell your people. Tonight or 10 o'clock in the morning? 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. And whose hands do I get it to? Give it to the nominations committee. I mean, to the, to the uh, credentials committee. Give it to the credentials committee. They will turn all those documents over. They're the public interface right now for the, for the convention. So what happened to the form that we set, set down from district convention that was filled out with that national delegate information we have on there? hundreds of those. So do we have to fill out a second one? The, that one didn't have any dollars attached to you. You come down and attach your credit card slip or your cash to it and I'm sorry, you're out. Credit card or check. I'm sorry. If you are not selected, you will get your money back. Okay. Well, will that be processed since you're not processing it? Totally if we're not processing over the weekend, we will know which ones to dispose of. The credit card slips will not be processed and the checks will be returned. Thank you. Or unless you instruct us to destroy the check, which is probably the best decision. Thank you. If someone wanted to get a form tonight, where would they get that? We have a question. Credentials has them. Is there somebody who could do it? There are multiple tonight? sources. You can get them from credentials. You can get them from, from my assistant. Yeah, it's a nomination form that's in the, in the manual that every district chairman has. That's right, Ralph spent a little bit of money making some. Well, we also have some out that we Okay. Uh, Greg, uh, Mr. Chairman, this might be a little out of order, but I would propose that the uh, credentials is extended until 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, just because it was so crowded up there. Uh, we're going to open early tomorrow morning instead of opening at 8. We're going to open it. The, uh, we're requesting all members of the. It's perfect timing. I really like that. Okay. It reminds me of quite an observation I had. Uh, Kent and Kilsher Burton. When do you want to start? You want your committee in place at seven to open at seven thirty? Yes. Commit, members of credentials. If you see your credentials committee tonight, get them to their working location it's by seven, so they can be on the way at seven thirty. So we get that done because party rules are very clear that credentials should close. At 10. Yes, I understand. Uh, Are you speaking to the fee? I'm, I'm speaking to the fee. I'm speaking to the fee. The credential says that that will be registered. Okay, let's, let's first finish this fee issue because we're off, off the reservation. Any further observations on the on fee? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the deposit. I support the motion, but I wonder if it's made it clear that the chairman and the National Committee Man and Committee Woman are the three people who will make the decision about the refunds. We normally do that, yeah. Okay. Okay. Question. Having said that, Question. all in favor of setting the fee at $1,600 indicate by saying aye? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Um, now, Mr. Cole. Yes. What was your question? Well, we were talking about earlier about 6 a.m. for uh, getting our uh, registration finished up, getting our tickets and all the packets for those who haven't been able to do it yet. And the registration desk, it, it are, it will be registered and checked off for being here today. That's the, is that the credentials desk? Yes. Okay, that was part of it. And then the other part of it is finishing up, I guess, is uh, earlier in this meeting, it was said it would be 6 o'clock that uh, 
we, those of us that are here now that haven't got our tag for this uh, for the convention, that's two separate issues, isn't it? I don't make something myself clear. I know we said the six o'clock piece. Right? We're going to open tomorrow morning. That's where I got confused. I, I heard of something earlier today. I think about in this meeting about opening six o'clock for no. And, uh, I don't believe that. I don't believe that issue was ever on the table. Oh, so we're going to. Campus credential should be there at seven. To be working at seven thirty. Breakfast is to be at seven. I'm now dealing with an announcement that I didn't want to go to. We have one more business item, and Mr. Frank, would you come up and uh, discuss the inner rule issue that you worked this afternoon? With the uh, able assistance of the parliamentary and the interim rules committee met this afternoon to try to uh, take proactive uh, steps to clarify a number of issues that will be important in our getting through the order of business, getting the business done and adjourning. Uh, I do want to point out, and I, I don't think Randy bothered to do that, but, but our parliamentarian actually is a quite distinguished gentleman who is one of the authors of Robert's Rules of Order. So if, if you... Wow. One of those people, like Lance, really in the rules, and you, you've got the man here. Uh, the, the issue had to do, and, and we wanted to address this up front because it was something that created problems in some other states and, and actually getting things done. And it had to do with, with the mighty nature of the Rules Committee interpretations. And I'm going to publish this and I'll distribute it by email later tonight as soon as I have a chance to scan it. Uh, defines a how binding the interim rules are, the applicability of interim rules doing the state convention, and clarifies when and how long they're in effect, and what's the only steps that can be taken to uh, overrule the interim rules and substitute something else. So. This is a three-page document. I'm not going to read it, but I will make sure that it's converted to electronic format and distributed to everybody that I have email list on the delegates list and anybody else that wants to make specific requests and, uh, and give me their emails. Uh, this is not this is not a motion. This is just an advice. Okay, it was just pointed out to me that I had stepped a little out of order. So I took that out of order. It was an announcement, so it didn't occur in the announcement part. And it reminded me that we needed to get back to the interim rule regarding qualifications as national convention delegates or alternates. And because she has a much stronger and more pleasant voice than mine, I'm going to ask the secretary to read this. Interim rule regarding qualification for nomination as national convention delegate or alternate. Whereas Article 5, Section 15, G4 of the Alaska Republican Party rules provides for the apportionment of national convention delegates based on the support of each qualified presidential candidate received at each district convention. Whereas Article 1, Section 5 of the ARP rules authorizes the State Central Committee to adopt interim rules to be in effect until the next state convention when each interim rule shall be adopted and or rejected and whereas National Republican Party Rule 15C12 which prevents the election, selection, or binding of national convention delegates or alternates pursuant to a state party rule which materially changes the manner of such election, selection, or binding adopted or made effective subsequent to October 1st, 2011, does not prevent the adoption and application of a subsequently adopted rule 
which ins ensures the accurate implementation of rules adopted before October 1st, 2011, rather than materially changing them. Therefore, be it resolved by the Alaska Republican Party State Central Committee that the following interim rule is adopted effective immediately. Interim rule regarding qualification for nomination as, nas as national convention delegate or alternate. To be eligible for nomination or election as a national convention delegate or alternate for a delegate or an alternate position allocated to a qualified presidential candidate in accordance with Article 5, Section 15G of the ARP rules, an individual must be approved by the duly authorized representative of that qualified presidential candidate. That means you can't sign up for Romney. It's a very simple interpretation of all that incredible grammar is that for a delegate to appear, they must be qualified by their campaign. In other words, the, if you're a Romney delegate, the Romney campaign has to recognize you. If you're a Paul delegate, the Paul campaign has to recognize you. And if you're a Gingrich delegate, you're recognized as a Gingrich delegate by the Gingrich folks and correspondingly the same for Santorum. It's that simple. It ensures that we, the problem we had two year, uh, four years ago cannot occur. It is a different way of addressing the Donnelly rule, where two-thirds of the entire McCain delegation was hijacked in our nomination process. This just gives the campaigns an opportunity to have, some, have the input as to who their nominees are. Who are the people who worked on their campaign to make sure that they have about that simple, about that straightforward. That's a different kind of grammar, but that, I think it covers the issue. Randy, when does that occur? That would occur, they would do that at the nominations committee. I think we have representatives definitely from many of the, camp of the campaigns here, and I'm working with the one remaining campaigns. Uh, how many of you got a copy of the letter that we, that we received from the RNC legal counsel? Uh, some of you may not have got a copy of it, but basically Debbie and I and Randy have been in conversation with RNC legal counsel because the question has come up, uh, what happens if we don't comply with the plan that we filed prior to October 1st last year, which was duly filed on time that said that those, yes, that's it right there. Yeah, I, yeah, but I don't need it, I don't think. But, but the, the, the answer came back was if we deviate from that plan, it's an all probability that our entire delegation will not be seated. So that basically is why I believe this was re, re emphasized at this point. And, uh, uh, but so if, if, if we don't go there with, Eight eight six two, at, 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 which would be in compliance with what we filed with the RNC as we would go forward. Then, then that's it. We 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 may not be seated as a delegation. He didn't say that. Absolutely wouldn't. But in all probability, the credentials committee there would not seat our delegation because we deviated from that plan. So uh, that just I wanted to want to make that point that we did inquire because the question was brought up. And uh, that so if you if you didn't cut a copy of that, give me an email address, I'll send it to you. But thank you. Yes, the campaign would have someone that we would recognize from those campaigns. Yeah. For example, the, the, the Santorum campaign from the last one. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my understanding is the Romney folks have people here 
I, I expect that we have adequate representation. And if not, I can contact at least one more qualified Ron Paul person to validate this issue. Uh, we have folks in state from the Cambridge campaign who have been their leadership since we started. And uh, I view several people here in the state as the Santora de designees for Alaska. So the party would officially recognize Yeah, we would, we would recognize to, yeah, to, 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 affirm, to, to validate, validate those, those, those delegates. And uh, Edmund, you had a question? Yeah, and those names will be given to the nominations committee. So well, the nominations committee will, 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 will get a whole bunch of stuff. And then the, my view is this would give a second stream of information coming in the nomination committee. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I, I just kind of a, a question here, point of information, just so I understand here. Um, basically, what you're saying is that if the person did not work on the first on the candidate's campaign and is therefore recognized as being a bona fide Romney, Gingrich, Santorum, Paul supporter, that they do not then have the privilege of going on. I'm saying they would not have standing unless the campaign must recognize them. It's the campaign's call, not our call. I see. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that, excuse me, Debbie's asking the middle, and I, I don't think it's like if you haven't uh, been uh, working actively for the campaign, but, but they are the final word. Is that, is that correct? They're the final word on who's going to go, who they would like to represent them. So it doesn't necessarily mean you were a campaign worker or anything. But they have to feel comfortable with that name. Anything else? All in favor of adopting wow. and keep a second item. More discussion. Okay. Why have a motion? I have a motion. I didn't know we had a motion. We have a motion. We have a motion. It was second. Okay. I'd like to amend. And your name, sir? My name is Kevin Cashman, which is 12. And uh, we rearranged the agenda which will allow for the Google Committee report to come before the nomination for the elections. This was adopted and approved by the flight. I'm told that we allow that committee to review this interim rule uh, and let that body decide, not this body decide, on this particular uh, motion to adopt the interim rule. So your your motion to refer to motion is to move this decision to refer it to the rules refer to the actual rules committee, which is already on the agenda. Okay. Is there a second? Second. The uh, central committee can do things since we are a matter of hours different. I've been reminded of a technicality. That's why we have a problem with the term. If we refer it to the to the, the work of the rules committee is only becomes effective so that what we're dealing with already is an advisory matter on the other item. Rules that are passed to be effective immediately must be passed by a two-thirds majority, whereas Normally, a rule only needs to be passed by a simple majority of the commission. So it, it does put a higher threshold on getting it done. Well, well, it, it, it would be, yeah, it, it could be adopted, but it wouldn't have the impact of being effective for this cycle. If you want to have it effective for this cycle, as a majority vote, it is our decision to make today. Uh, Yes, two, three. Kirk Quaker, Shadow District 16. It's my understanding that this came from the rules. So, from the rules committee. The standing rules committee. Yeah. Tomorrow, we, we have the commission rules committee uh, in the back. Uh, Rex, the back. Shadow District, uh, District 11. You know, I, I think we ought to remember that the, the central committee is the body that has. Um, greater standing and, and, and the ability to make those decisions and not the rules. Rules is, is a subcommittee. 
that uh, we were sort of phase two. Yeah. And so I would say that the Central yeah. Committee itself needs to make a decision like that. Okay. Uh, Brandon and then Lance and then Ben. So my only concern is that uh, we will have the, the, the uh, nominations committee deciding on who will be uh, the delegates or, or choosing who, who comes before the body of delegates and, the, and uh, the body of the convention is going to vote on those delegates and then we're going to have one or two individuals that will have veto authority. No, it'd be before it comes to the body. Yeah. They will do their work in committee. Okay. And then who are going to be the uh, representatives? Who are going to be the representatives for the Gingrich and Santorum uh, groups? I guess is my other question. Who who will that be? Is that uh, someone? Uh, well, Santorum will be the state leaders for the Santorum campaign. And that is M M Mr. Uh, Bronson and Mr. Uh, Terry Honor, who's here in the room. And uh, and what about for the Gingrich campaign? Uh, excuse me, I'm right here. Right there. Okay. Nice to meet you. And Mr. Riddle, that problem. Uh, Lance and then uh, Chris again. Okay. So three points. One to address Rex. The rule. We're not sending it to the rules committee to make a decision. We're sending it to the rules committee to send on to the floor. The body of the convention has a higher authority than the SCC. So we're sending it to the body with the highest authority. Second, I think it's vague the way it's written in there about duly appointed, and that seems a little too open-ended. And then the third point is, does that mean that the representatives, the duly representatives, can't be national delegates because now they're working on the nominations process so they can be approving themselves? Uh, I do not believe that any of these people that I would view as we'll talk to the campaigns about having someone who is properly positioned so that we don't have a conflict. Right. First, we're at the witching hour. Yes, we're almost done. Secondly, uh, a point of information, is this, are these duly authorized representatives to confirm that these people who have been nominated truly are Romney, Santorum, of Gingrich people, or are they going to be the final authority to approve those people to be on the uh, as representatives? No, they're there to approve who is qualified. Is so, I, so they're basically they're not very verifying that these truly are those people rather than sheep, uh, wolves and sheep clothing. Yes, sir. That's my understanding. Now there's a Debbie. I'm sorry, I didn't come back to you earlier. Okay, Debbie Brown, District Thirty. I'm thinking about what our committee man just said, where our, our leaders here submitted a plan to the RNC. Eight, eight, six, and two. And, uh, well, I couldn't hear her. Eight, eight, six, and two. That's what I said. So mine is thinking, at the time that you submitted the plan, things are a lot different now. And so I, no, no. But tomorrow on the agenda, now I'm just trying to say, when we get to our agenda that we approve in the convention tomorrow, when we get to this point where we moved up to 9.5 and we moved up to 9, you know, 10 minutes after that, we're going to have a lot of the same discussion tomorrow. And when, when, the late, when our secretary read to us all of that, we're, we really owe it to our larger body to read that again because we can't just fill out this simple little interpretation of what all that said. I mean, that was a lot of words to describe exactly what a small thing that we're dealing with. Why did they go to such a lengthy uh, set of words? Uh, you know, when they could have said it in a couple of phrases, I suspect that there's some concern here that we're not really picking up on. And I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. Okay. So now, get to my point. My point is, being the strict Santorum person that I am, was whatever you know i need to have a sense of what this rule change is going to mean in a larger sense i, I mean we really need to understand what rnc is really going to do when they get down there <coughs> and what we're going to be doing now needs a real significance because our country our country is on the line uh last time sir uh yes i understand um i'm 
I hope I don't uh, make uh, or anything with this next comment, but uh, I'm going to suggest that uh, I understand, first of all, why we are making this this uh, resolution, this interim rule. I understand it. I understand the spirit in which it's done. But uh, it sounds to me that we might be better served if we're trying to avoid any legal problems of just uh, scrapping the nominations committee altogether and letting the individual campaigns appoint uh, the representatives. And that's all I have to say. At this time, is the move to second that? Oh, please. Well yes. Said. So, in the spirit of uh, the speaker just spoke before me, what you're doing is you're you're eliminating these 40 odd people on the nominations committee, no. and you're turning it over to four who aren't even necessarily delegates, didn't even necessarily pay a fee or get elected to be here, though they might be. But there's no guarantee of that based on the vagueness that's in that rule, the way it's written up. I totally disagree. Mr. Chairman. Okay. I also think that at the heart of this, we have not been given proper time to review the language, whether it be from an attorney or otherwise. I think that it's unfair to try to make such a snap decision. On what I think would be a fairly critical ruling. So I still submit that the motion that I propose goes forward. We refer this to another committee uh, where the larger body has an opportunity to review this. At this time, I'd like to vote on the amendment then. Dan? I call the question. Okay. Please don't do that. Can we withdraw that so I can just vote the matter? I withdraw it. Well, thank you. All in favor of the amendment? of the referral oh, yes. of the referring it to the Rules Committee of the Convention indicate by saying aye? Aye! Those opposed indicate no. by saying no. no. No! It is not referred. Oh. Division. Division. We'll do a division standing. Those in favor? Stand. Raise your hand if you have a property. Are, are you guys for standing? Are you busy? You're standing. Are you standing? Box on. One, two, three. Twenty-three. Those opposed? If you have a proxy, one paw up. Which can also be overruled on the floor. The vote is at least 46 to 23. Stop it, Mr. Chairman. But it is in front of the right body in the past. And this might be a form of motion. In the past, we've given consideration to folks such as our governor and our lieutenant governor and our two senators from uh, our senators and, and our congressmen who may be coming here to this convention from out of state. They've not had the time to get here. How do we deal with them becoming delegates if their plane arrives from say DC sometime tomorrow after our vote? So our our normal motion, process. Okay. A, a point of order? Uh, just a minute. I need it back. Let me now stay on point and not go to the herding rabbits for, for a moment. All in favor of the interim rule as presented indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay? Nay. 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 Divide. Stand, please. 
summer because we will have a new redistricting map. We will have to make plans to reorganize several districts. There's some real things that we need to sanction and approve at that meeting. Uh, having said that, Rex, your issue is what? My question is, is, is we believe that we may have the governor attend this convention as a delegate. Is he here? If he cannot get out of Juno due to business, how do we ensure that even though he, in his position, may be able to be a delegate and be here? Likewise for Congressman Don Young and Lieutenant Governor uh, getting here as well. In the past, I believe, and those who have greater history than I can probably speak to it, we have uh, suspended that portion to allow those who are in positions of like the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, to be able to arrive perhaps late and still be considered as delegates. Point of order, late has been... The point of order, the agenda was set and we intentionally voted, this body did, against there being any new business beyond the business that Frank added to the agenda. We have no more agenda. I believe I asked a question. I believe there's, there's ample precedent to deal with this. And I will, I will visit with the Rules Committee and the, my fellow members of the RNC and we will determine an appropriate way forward on that, Rex. Thank you. Uh, Hearing no other business, thank you very much. We, we are adjourned. I'll be up there in a sec.